Welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. Thank you so much for joining yet another special Mm -hmm. episode of Farming Podcast. Today we have a female entrepreneur, female farmer, award-winning female farmer at that, and she's a mining engineer by profession. Yeah, I think each time I speak to farmers, I'm always blown away by the various professions or qualifications that farmers have and how somehow we always find a way back to the land, farming, getting our hands dirty. And so um, this evening's topic is all is going to be all about hydroponic farming. And we're going to be speaking to Unontlanta Halama, who is the co-founder of Davinon Hydroponics. Um, and as I said, she's an award-winning entrepreneur and she won the Top Female Entrepreneur Award of the Total Energies 2018 to 2019 Challenge. And um, yeah, we're going to be unpacking her business today, Gavin on Hydroponics, just to get to understand how she came into the industry, what made her decide to study mining and go into farming, and if she's still doing both, and um, what type of products is she producing as a hydroponic female farmer. If you have any questions for our guests this evening, please feel free to comment on the uh, comment bo- box below uh, from wherever you're watching us, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube Live. Let's get straight into it. And our topic this evening is called the business of hydroponic farming. Nontlantla, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome onto the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, welcome to all the viewers out there. Fantastic. So tell us about Davinon Hydroponics. When did you start farming? I was introduced to farming in 2018 uh, by my business partner. You know, we've uh, tried different types of businesses, uh, but for for some reason, uh, we bumped into farming. Uh, he quit his job and he was just not happy, you know, with his nine to five. He quit his job and he had access to about 10 hectares of land and he just decided to try it out and he just introduced me to it and we started. Wow. So did you also quit your job? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Um, I think entrepreneurship is quite a lengthy journey and you definitely need to make sure that you've got a stable foundation before you can actually quit your nine nine to five. You know, it has to be your 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 entrepreneurship um Adventure has to be more than just a side hustle before you can just quit your nine to five job. Absolutely, and I agree. Thank you for the words of wisdoms there. Uh, tell us, so you're a mining engineer. Uh, so is this your full time job? And then, how much time did you dedicate to your farming? Yes, I'm a mining engineer. Uh, that is my full time job. So basically, what I do is I I wake up early around four o'clock. I'm at work around six o'clock. I knock off around f- uh, between four and five. And basically, when I get home, I then, you know, uh, change my mining hat uh, into my farming hat. And that's that's when I get time to actually do my farming. Okay. So where's your farm based? And um, on what type of hydroponic systems are you farming on? My farm is based in Pretoria, right? And currently what I'm... Uh, the hydroponic system that I'm using is NFT, which is your nutrient uh, uh, film flow. Um, uh, that's the easiest one that I could actually get into, uh, especially because I am producing lettuce. So lettuce is uh, uh, much easier to produce with that type of a system. So that's what I do. Okay. And what are the costs involved in opening up a hydroponic farm? So you managed, you mentioned that you're using an NFT hydro system. Um, you know, how many... Um, uh, units does it have? How big is it? How how many leads, heads of lettuce can it accommodate? And what are the costs involved in building an NFT hydro system? Your hydroponics is uh, very expensive to start. Um, that is uh, something that you actually um, need to really consider uh, before you can just start farming because Besides the tunnel itself, you have to consider the type of system that you're using. And the type of system that you would use depends on the type of produce that you want to farm. So on on average, on your traditional farming, you would have your tunnel that would cost between uh, 60000 to 100000 um, with hydroponics, it can be between 60000 to 180000 depending on the um, technical abilities of 
your tunnel, then you still have to buy the system. So let's say you buy your tunnel for about 100K, you will still need to buy your system, which is going to be between 140,000 to 500,000, depending on the number of plants that you, you would want to produce. So right now I'm, produ I'm producing about uh, 2,000 plants um, in a 30 by 10 tunnel, um, uh, producing lettuce, of course. So that was quite expensive for me to start. But yeah, I think with the with me winning uh, Total Startup of the Year, that actually helped me a lot because the money that I got from there, I invested it on uh, starting uh, the business and actually funding, uh, um, the, the, funding the capital side of the business. Yeah, yeah. Why did you decide to do hydroponic farming if your business partner had 10 hectares of land? Um, why didn't you both decide to just go farm directly into the soil? Why was hydroponic uh, um, an option for you guys or a choice for you guys? I think for us, the critical factor was water. Our farm was situa situated in an area where it did not have, uh, we did not have access to enough water. So with hydroponics, you use 90% less water as compared to your traditional farming, right? And with your traditional farming, you probably would have to plant the whole 10 hectares at some point to make to make profit. But with hydroponics, because you are planting vertically, right, you are able to plant, uh, you can even plant 14,000 uh, plants in a 30 by 10 space, right, as compared to your, your traditional farming, which you can do about 750 to 1,000 plants. So you can do 14 times more than what you would do on your traditional farming, like in this instance, you know, when I, I'm just comparing uh, my situation, you know, where, where we are and um, how we got to where we are now. So in terms of water, we're using less water. We are getting uh, more plants as compared to uh, us using traditional farming. So that's, that was the decision that, um, that was the, the, the key points that made, made us switch from traditional farming to hydroponics. Mm -hmm. Over and above the operational slash setup cost, what other costs are uh, are expensive to run a hydroponic farm? Your maintenance, because the system needs to be maintained. You need to run pumps. Uh, you need to run your reservoirs. Um, also, the nutrients that you use for your plants are not your normal that you would use on your traditional farming. So those are costs that you carry for the lifetime of the business. And also in terms of your OEM, your original um, equipment manufacturer, they have to come and assist uh, on your monthly basis or on a period that you guys would determine to come and see if the system is still functioning functioning properly. So you will also pay um, uh, uh, an amount of, uh, or a fee rather, for those guys to come out and come and check your system if it's still running properly. And the other thing is with hydroponics, you run the risk of, losing a lot of plants at once. Should one of your plants uh, get uh, infected by a disease, it's easy for the plant to infect the other ones. So you run a risk of um, losing your, your produce over a short period of time. So yeah, that's, that's, those are the costs that you would, you would normally carry with hydroponics. You know, a lot of people are interested in farming and they hear these um, very high terms and jargons like hydroponic farming, sustainable agriculture, climate change, etc. And the most common questions we get asked here on the Private Property Farming Podcast is, what is a profitable crop to farm? So, um, and I know you can make mining farming any crop, but, you know, you're the expert from a hydroponics perspective, especially using the NFT hydro system here. And so what have you found to be the most high, uh, what have you found to be the most profitable crop to farm in a hydroponic system? Basically, the one that is more profitable would be your leafy vegetables, right? So like your kale, um, like your lettuce, you know, because the operational costs are quite low. You know, so those are the two, uh, those those are the, 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 the crops that you would farm. Um, I think uh, the example would be your lettuce and your, your kale. So that's easier to maintain as compared to your other crops. So it's, it's less expensive to run. So basically, yes. But I think when it comes to costs and um, uh, running costs, it all depends on your market. Um, I think it with hydroponics, it also depends on the amount of crops that you you can have in your system, you know, uh, in, a, in a particular area. So somebody would have, uh, for example, um, if one would produce, let's say, one, or if a person would produce cabbages as compared to me producing lettuce, if the person can set up a system in such a way that 
they can have more cabbages than me, obviously, then they would make more money because now they have uh, um, more crops to sell. So it's also about your market. You know, uh, if you don't have a market to, for your crops, then it becomes a problem because you can produce a lot of crops uh, and yet fail to 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 actually uh, sell them to the market, which was also a challenge that we we had. You know, because we were also producing spinach. At some point, we were producing so much spinach that, but we could the market was so flooded and we could not we could not sell the spinach. So we were producing spinach at a lower cost than our competitors, but we could not sell the spinach, you know? So it became a, pro a problem because hydroponics is also about the ratio of, of plants you grow um, as compared to, as, as to, to the space that you're using and the amount that you can sell. So the more you produce uh, and the more you can sell, the more money you would make. So I would say, before you even think about um, which product um, is, is, is less expensive to run, I think it should be more about uh, a product that you can you can produce, uh, you can you can gain more yields from and actually sell it. So the problem is actually the bottleneck is the market more than the crop itself. Yeah, you spoke about maintenance being one other um, high cost involved in hydroponic farming. Could you think, could you say that electricity is also another one? Um, because I'm sure the system has to keep running 24-7. Um, does it consume a lot of electricity or are you using solar to run your hydroponic farm? Okay, we, we are using solar, right, to run our our. Uh, farm, right? But electricity is is one of the costs that you would you would incur when you are running a hydroponics farm, right? And also with the thing with electricity, especially if you are not using solar, is that you tend to incur more costs uh, should you have a power outage, because now it means your plants will not be able to you know um, uh, sustain to be sustainable uh, to grow because of they will not have access to oxygen, for example. So then it would be your running costs for, for your electricity and the cost that you will incur should you not have power. So, yeah, those are the other are are some of the things that you need to consider when you go into hydroponics in terms of costs when it comes to electricity. Fantastic. If you've just joined, if you've just joined us, we're speaking to Nontanta Palama, who is the co-founder of Dan Davenon Hydroponics. She's based in Pretoria and she is a full-time mining engineer. However, runs a hydroponic farm as well, uh, together with a business partner. And so far, we've been speaking about the running costs of a hydroponic farm, the setup costs of a hydroponic farm, and uh, some of the uh, crops that one could farm uh, in a hydroponic system. Uh, so, if you have any questions for our guests, this evening, please feel free to ask because um, we want to give you the best value of our conversation this evening. Uh, furthermore, Nontlantla, um, you know, how has your friends or your immediate family received the news that you are running a hydroponic farm? Do you think it is now maybe attractive to um, your friends uh, being a young person in the industry? Yeah, um, I think they've received, uh, you know, the situation very well. Uh, some of them are, um, are inspired. Luckily for me, uh, most of my friends are into businesses, you know. Um, some are into property, you know. So um, it's, 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 I think it's, uh, it's, it's not um, a new type of environment for the people that I'm around, you know. So it was, it was also quite um, easy for me. Uh, to get support from them because uh, most of them are in business, you know, and some of them are intending to go into business. So, yeah. Great. And tell me about your markets. Like, you you know, you're running, you, you, you're growing leafy crops. You've mentioned some of the challenges with growing leafy crops, for example, like spinach, for example. Um, how, you know, when, when you're supplying to your markets, you know, can they tell that this was grown hydroponically versus non-hydroponic? Uh, farming, and uh, do you find that you fetch a higher price for your product, having grown it from a hydroponic uh, in a hydroponic system? Um, you can't really. I wouldn't say you could really tell in terms if if because it just depends on the quality. You know, there are farmers that are farming traditionally that could you know uh, produce almost the same quality as hydroponics, but I think at face value you would not really tell to say this is from is grown from a hydroponic farm or not if the traditional farmer is is a good farmer, right? 
So uh, in terms of, of the market, uh, I mean to the for, in, informal market, you know, that's um, where the, there's a lot of potential there. So that's that's basically where I am, I am at now because it's very difficult um, to, you know, get contracts, you know, from your, your bigger supermarket, you know, to supply them. And also in terms of the quantity that they need, you know, from small scale farmers, we can't really just meet the demand and the challenges that, you can't now go just, you know, partner up with just anyone in terms of putting your product out there. So I'm, I'm currently I'm just uh, based on uh, trying to infiltrate the, the informal market as much as possible. Uh, that's where my clients are. So yeah, I'm trying I'm, I'm trying as much as possible to expand the uh, in that in market because it's actually quite a profitable market, right? Um, actually, if you have got a very good uh, marketing strategy, then it becomes a very, very profitable market. It actually becomes, at some point, you wouldn't think it's more profitable than your formal market, you know, because of the amount of vendors or your street vendors that are there that uh, I can sell to an amount or the, um, the, the number of um, your, your, you know, your, what, what we would call your spaza shops. You know, um, also the people that, you know, make your, your food such as the quota and all those things. So it's, it's easier to infiltrate that market. Yeah, I totally agree. The informal market is one that is constantly overlooked. And I think the, in, the barriers to entry are quite low there. Uh, mm-hmm. And having summed up your journey, uh, Nontlanta, starting uh, farming in 2018, what are some of the biggest milestones that you've achieved since starting um, or co-founding Gavinon Hydroponics and uh, where to in the near future? Well, I think before I even go to the milestones, we I think we have achieved a lot, right? But before we got there, because we were hit hard by COVID, right? And we basically had to kind of start over. You know, we lost um, original the, the original farm that we had, we lost it. and But somehow we were able to acquire a 25-hectare farm um, as compared to a 10-hectare farm that we had. And we basically had to start over. So right now, we are also still just trying to get um, our feet um, in terms of uh, the new market, uh, in terms of the new uh, economic conditions, right? So I would say now the biggest milestone that we have achieved is us uh, coming from losing everything to now uh, owning a uh, 25-hectare farm, you know, as opposed to having us uh, started Having started at the ten hectare farm on a ten hectare farm, so for me that was actually quite a, a big thing. You know, uh, it was quite challenging to actually acquire the farm, and I think also in terms of our business model, um, we have changed quite a lot, um, and we have also managed to kind of lower our operational cost with uh, a new business model that we have come up with. So that that's what we we have achieved so far. It's great to hear that you've lost your farm and had to start all over again because I know it can be quite daunting and an expensive exercise to pick up once again. But just to ask you a final question uh, for tonight, Nontlanta, is what message could you give out to the youth, especially those that want to start hydroponic farming? You know what? Um, when it comes to farming, I think people really underrate uh, uh, farming. I think it's one of uh, the business industries or avenues where a lot of uh, issues related to unemployment can be solved, right? And I, I truly believe that anyone can farm as long as you are willing to to learn, you know, and invest in yourself educationally to understand the market, to understand the systems. So I think hydroponic farming, it is the future because you don't need a lot of land, first of all, you know. Um, you can start off small, you know. You can even start at, the, uh, at your own backyard, so I think hydroponic farming, it is the future in terms of the requirements uh, to get uh, started. Of course, the capital uh, amount is a bit higher, but in terms of space, in terms of water, you don't really need much. You know, I think it's just a matter of being dedicated and it's just a matter of uh, being resilient and uh, p- persevere through the whole situation. Uh, and just, I just go for it. You know, there's nothing stopping you from starting small and actually becoming uh uh, one of the most uh, uh, profitable farms in South Africa, even in the world. 
you know, there's so much potential in, in, in agriculture, especially when it comes to hydroponics. It's sort of an untapped area. You know, there's a lot of people that are going into that space now, uh, but there's still, uh, the, like, the pie is big enough for everyone, basically. So go for it, research about it, um, try and understand as much as possible uh, about hydroponic farming, and chances are you would actually enjoy it. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Nonjantla. We really appreciate it and uh, all the best with Devon on Hydroponics. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. That was Nonjantla Palama, co-founder of Dev- Devon on Hydroponics. She has a farm based out in Pretoria, started off on 10 hectare and now has expanded to 25 hectare, not by choice, but because of the global pandemic that had affected her business. And I think one thing we could take out of her story is definitely resilience. And she's quite innovative having to start a hydroponic farm. She's really walked um, her journey with regards to starting a farm together with a business partner. She understands her costs. She understands her market dynamics um, and also learning about the crop, you know, in terms of when's the right time to harvest, who to sell to, who not to sell to, and the high costs involved in selling a crop in the formal markets. Um, I hope this story inspired you this evening because it has inspired me as well, just to see another female in the industry. Um, And uh, I think also with her being a mining engineer, it just shows that anybody can farm, whether you're a nurse, a doctor, a teacher, or an engineer, you could definitely get your hands dirty and farm in innovative ways just like hydroponic farming. If you missed this episode, please catch it on our, on our YouTube channel and continue to subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, follow our social media platforms for uh, more topics that we're going to have in the near future right here on the Farming Podcast brought to you by Private Property. That's it for me this evening and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.